Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest is Mr. Luke Henderson, writer and creator. Luke, it's a pleasure to uh, finally get to meet you and uh, can't wait to get you know better. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, you bet. Well, what I usually like to do when we have a guest on is just to get to learn a little bit more about you uh, when it comes to comics, comic book writing, and some of that passion that goes behind that. Is it okay if we start back then? Sure, absolutely. So um, unlike most people, I'm not really a lifelong comic reader. Uh, I read a little in middle school because manga was really popular, especially Shonen Jump at the time. But I didn't really become a regular comics reader until about 2018, 2019. Um, I was feeling really nostalgic one day because we had read in high school Mouse by Art Spiegelman. And so I was just like, I really want to read that again because it's been a long time. And then that kind of spiraled into me picking up a bunch of stories that I've heard about but I've never read. So like uh, The Killing Joke and uh, a bunch of Alan Moore. And then I eventually got into Sandman and then kind of spiraled to where I am today, where I'm now trying to write and kickstart my own comics. That's pretty cool, man. Is there anybody in particular that maybe that you've read before or maybe someone in your life, a teacher? Um, it could be anybody that really kind of started that passion for storytelling. Did it start at an early age or is that something a little bit uh, later in life as well? That one, um, kind of a weird answer. But um, so when me and my friends were in daycare, we would basically do our own handmade like TTRPGs. We would like draw our own characters and cut them out with paper and laminate them. And then during daycare, we would just make up stories with these characters. So that's really where it started for me. Uh, but I didn't really get into writing fiction until, uh, to, honestly, the last four or five years. Uh, for a long time, I've been writing uh, like more journalistic stuff and more uh, reviews and critiques and stuff like that. But uh, that uh, eventually just kind of got burnt out on that. Um, I was writing a lot in the political sphere and just that's a very negative place. So I just got very burnt out because everyone has an opinion. Everyone thinks that you're, what you're saying is an attack on them. So that's why I kind of moved to fiction. It's more fun and I find it more fulfilling now. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I think those are, are pretty tough uh, places to uh, have really good conversations in, especially with politics these days. So I could see you there. And um, yeah, that switch to fiction. Is there something that you could have or maybe have brought from your other types of writing that have worked out really well when it comes to writing comics? Yeah, I think I do a ton of research before I write my stories, um, especially if it's something that's supposed to be set in modern day. Like, like right now I'm currently working on something that's set in New Mexico and like, I've only been to New Mexico once. So I've been doing a ton of research on cities there. So that way I can pick something that I think really fits for these characters, but also just, it just feels real. Like, um, that's, I'll, I think I credit that a lot to my nonfiction writing because I've had to do a lot of research for that, but I'm also just a huge Michael Crichton fan and Michael Crichton does that a lot in his stories as well. Just you get those little teeny tiny details and it makes it feel more real. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, when it comes to the types of genre that you like to write, um, is there a certain like a horror? Is it more uh, comedy? Is it because I know we were talking a, a second ago and uh, although you've read some superhero stuff, that's not really where your passion is today when it comes to comics. Would that be right? That's correct. Yeah, I think horror is probably my favorite to write. That's really the the, the stories that really yeah kicked it off for me. I was like, I want to try out writing where things like the Sandman or uh, some of Jeff Lemire's work and um uh, now I'm blanking, but just, yeah, horror was really, oh, and James, James Tynan, oh, his yeah. stuff that he did, especially his early boom studio stuff, like really got me as like, wow, like in the horror genre, you really can just like focus on, uh, these really kind of big ideas that maybe are kind of uncomfortable, but save something really deep and meaningful. But that doesn't mean I don't branch out into other genres. I mean, like the, the Kickstarter I'm currently running right now is actually an action romance story. So like, I do like to spread my wings when I can. That's cool. Well, I mean, that's a good segue. Why don't we jump into that? Um, I have it pulled up in the background, Luke, if it's okay, I'd love to share my screen. I think that could be a really good way for you to introduce the Kickstarter and the project um, at the same time, if that's all right with you. Absolutely. All right, here you go, my friend. All right, so here it is, summer's end. Um, you want to kind of walk us through um, how many days it was, and then we could kind of figure out the percent to goal that you're currently at? 
Yeah, so uh, we just launched uh, last Friday, so it was going to be a it's a twenty eight day campaign. We still got about four, th- um, not four thousand. Jesus, <laughs> we got about six hundred and twenty dollars to go to meet our goal. We had a really excellent first day. It's actually been my most successful day one of any campaign. Um, I guess uh, so. Summer's End is a uh, collection of two short comics that both explore uh, relationships and the complicated things that can come with that, but in very different ways. The first story is uh, a superhero breakup drama story between this masked hero who you can see on the screen called the smear. And the woman in there is his ex who is called La O. Now the thing that makes their relationship complicated is that he gave her her superpowers through that mask. It is his property. So now that they're broken up, he's decided I want my stuff back. (laughs) And so the story meets at this point where these two uh, see each other in public. She's with her new boyfriend and he's like, I want my mask back because you know, that's mine. But obviously she wants to keep it because she has her superpowers and that's a huge part of her identity now. So they have to duke it out in that story. That's awesome, man. That sounds great. And you said it was two different stories? Yeah. The second one is uh, one I wrote. Uh, The first one is by uh, Richie Frontera and uh, KV Gear, who are just uh, colleagues of mine. We make stuff uh, in the Comic Jam group. We've been doing that for a couple of years. And we just um, actually both these stories were originally going to be in a different anthology. But then that anthology had to be canceled due to health reasons for the organizers. And we just didn't want these stories to die. So uh, my story is uh, about two alien lovers on a distant planet where there are two uh, species of aliens, one that are made of ice and one that are made of fire. And this kind of stemmed from a lot of my stories just kind of start as jokes. (laughs) Like I was in my head thinking it would be funny to see uh, someone in a relationship that was made of ice and fire hug each other. (laughs) Because <laughs> that obviously <laughs> would could lead to disastrous results and how they would navigate that. But this story is not necessarily humorous. It's um, so the fire guy and the ice guy have to meet in secret because they're on imposing sides of a war on their planet. Yeah, and they're um got to hide their relationship, meet at nighttime. But they find out that the next day one of their generals is gonna uh, decree what's called a debtor's challenge where the best warriors of each side have to fight to the death and whoever side loses is indebted to the other side for a hundred years. And they're both the best warriors in their clan. So they know they're going to have to fight each other. Wow. That sounds pretty awesome too. So th- those are the two stories. I was just scrolling down because I-, I know there's a cover and now that cover is making a lot more sense, but I guess we'll get to that point. Maybe uh, Luke, can you walk us through um, the actual project um, we obviously got the the stories, but, you know, everything that it entails that people could get really excited about. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, first of all, it, we've got three great covers. If you are a fan of collecting different styles of art, um, our two interior artists, KV Gear and John Jack, both contributed covers. Um, John Jack is actually a painter. So they uh, painted a cover for us that is just and uh actually it was for sale it got snagged up on day one so unfortunately if you wanted that it's gone but uh kv gear he uh made a kind of more humorous cover that we're not putting the logo on because i don't want to cover up any of this goodness that it's got all the characters uh gathering around a cell phone for a selfie which is just that's one of my favorite things on a cover there's a there's an old Vampirella versus Purgatory cover that I have that I love where they're both listening to an iPod with one headphone on each of them. So uh-huh. I, I love that when fantasy characters do like stuff with technology that seems a little out of place. <laughs> and then our last cover is actually a uh, spicy, not safe for work cover by a uh, Camorian King. She is a artist who is really known uh, for her webtoon called uh, Regnum Anticum. Uh, she draw, she like, she really likes drawing like beefy guys with a more kind of uh, abstract, not abstract, but a a more kind of painted style. And it's just gorgeous. We got both, both of our couples on this character. It's both of our couples from this story. It's a double cover. So one side is the the superheroes and the other side is the aliens. Um, And uh, if you had backed in the first 48 hours, you would have gotten a free zine that came with uh, two mini comics. That's our meet cutes for these characters. (laughs) Like how, how did they meet? Um, Which, 
So it's no longer available for free, but it is now available as an add-on if that is something you want. You want to get a little more prequel for these stories. That's cool. Yeah. And here's really? the, uh, that cover you were telling me about with from John Jack. Yep, they are a very talented painter, um, and we just knew that we had to have a cover from them. Very cool. And let's see, here's the other one. Yep, by KB Gear. <laughs> yeah. I love it, and that's hilarious. Yeah, and I like those two covers because they're almost inverses because the A cover, the smear, the man superhero is in the front, but in the B cover, he's like in the back. So it's almost like we're getting to see his sadness from two different points of view. <laughs> That's great, man. All right, here we go. And here's that the one you were saying, the front and back cover, right? That's yep. attached, yeah. The spicy one. The spicy one, yes. <laughs> and we we wanted a lot of inspiration for this one from uh, shoujo manga covers, and I think I sent a couple Sailor Moon yeah. back covers. Like this is the kind of background we want, just you know, this nice kind of fluffy pink, colorful one. Yeah, that's cool, man. It came out really good. Thank came you. Out really good, yeah. All right, let's go through all the different uh, ways that you could pledge the rewards here. Here we go. You want to walk us through this? Absolutely. So um, what we started doing with this campaign is we have a digital deluxe edition because I know sometimes shipping, if you live out of the country, is just a pain in the butt. And we want to make sure everyone can get something really cool that if they want to. So the digital deluxe edition is going to it's going to have some concept art, some script excerpts. And I'm actually talking right now. I'm going to try to design it like it's the social media feed of these characters. So that way it's more than just a bunch of Word documents that I slapped at the end of this book. Yeah. And uh, we're also going to do, uh, me and Richie are going to interview each other about our respective stories and include that. And that's going to only be a Kickstarter digital thing. So if, you, if you're really interested in the behind the scenes stuff of making comics or how this comic is specifically made, like this is the tier you're going to really want. Yeah, so that's really cool. And then obviously we got our three covers um, and we're also offering mini sketches from both uh, John Jack and KV gear. And uh, they're both like I said, su super talented. So if you want anything, if one person's style is more your cup of tea, you can get either of them. I know uh, KV gear is, he's really good at superheroes. He's got a very kind of classic Steve Dipko kind of style. So he's good for that. And John is very good at animals. So if you're looking for a dog portrait or anything like that, we we got you covered. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and we're also offering uh, some original page art as well. Uh, we actually have got one of those snagged up. Also, you know, the person who likes really getting the inks like in your hand and be able to look. At it. So I'm also a letterer, and I also do hand lettering and i'm offering hand lettered sketches so it's uh if you've got a favorite poem or if you've got uh, a recipe or just anything you would like to have nicely hand lettered or even goofily hand lettered i'll do that too uh, offering that for for 50 bucks and then like i said we were offering the original cover art for the a cover but that has been snagged up so if you if you want that you're gonna just have to hope that person drops their pledge and i don't want them to drop their pledge so yeah, it's never fun when uh, when you see that happen. So that's awesome. Well, look, it looks it looks amazing. Here's all the. Thank you. I am I'm a graphic designer in my spare time, so I I tried really hard to make this look cool. <laughs> and here's a little bit about the the team behind um, the title. Yep, everyone's bio is there. Um... Uh, probably KV Gear is the one who's probably had got the more storied bio than the rest of us. We're all we're all fairly new, but we're like we've been in a few anthologies and we've worked together. Um, and Camorian King, uh, she's obviously got she's got a much bigger following than the rest of us with her, with her web comic, and she's actually running her own Kickstarter right now too for her latest book. So that that was a nice uh, circumstance right there. And then uh, for the bonus scene. I didn't even introduce her, uh, Nadine Pilara. She's a Russian artist. She specializes in like very uh, feminine, uh, pretty like um, shoujo anime characters. Like she loves drawing Sailor Moon and like the women from One Piece. And she designs a lot of merchandise for people who are like trying to make stuff to sell at cons and stuff. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds great. All right. So let's just go to the back. Just to remind everybody where you're currently at. 
um, $373 um, toward your goal, 25 days left, plenty of time for people to jump in. Um, but, you know, from a percent standpoint to your goal with uh, all that time left, Luke, you know, I wish you the very best. <laughs> I don't see any issues with you uh, having such a great start. So um, congrats on that start. That's hard to do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're hoping to get to 40% soon and just keep on chugging away at it. Very cool. All right, Luke. Well, can you kind of let people know, like, are you um, going to different cons this year? Anything like that? Um, and then also your social media that way we could share it with everybody um, that if you want to follow Luke, which uh, would be amazing, um, you could keep up to date with all the other stuff that you do as well. Because um, like you said, this is not your very first uh, writing gig. You've done some anthologies, some other work before. So I assume uh, there's probably going to be more. So people should probably follow you. That way they can stay up to date on everything you're doing. Absolutely. I've got plans for stuff to launch in 2025. So I'm definitely going to keep at it. Um, my Twitter and my Instagram are Luke W. Henderson M because someone else has at Luke W. Henderson, but I'm on blue sky at Luke W. Henderson. And, um, that those are pretty well the most I'm active. I'm, I'm also on TikTok, but if you follow me on TikTok, you're not going to get much. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good, Luke. Well, that's awesome. What we'll do for everybody is we'll make sure we put the Kickstarter link below. Um, and then we'll make sure we put all your socials as well, Luke, that way people could follow you. And then obviously, um, jump over onto that Kickstarter and make sure they, uh, they back summer's end. It looks incredible. The, the variants are pretty awesome, Luke. Congratulations on all of that. And uh, man, I wish you the very best. Uh, anything else that we're leaving out, my friend? Uh, I don't think so. Just uh, thank you for having me. Anyone watching, I'd love to have your support. Let's make it happen. Sounds great, Luke. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. It's a pleasure meeting you. And I hope this isn't our last time. No, I hope we meet again. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, my friend. All right. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.